go ahead and you can do the summary, guys. We are at Rivenworth, the abandoned castle. And uh, we have begun a foray into the dungeon area. User disconnected from your parts channel. Of the castle. We uh, countered and fought with hobgoblins the week before last. At the end of that fight, we begin our last week's action. User entered your from channel. Our, from our first fight, we turned a corner and made a light, and we found that we were entering the Von Jolik's family tomb. As we entered their tomb, we were attacked by two lizard swarms and a gnome. After defeating them, we found a key on the gnome. Uh, we found three gold each, and oh, I take it back. We found uh, we found found gold in the key. Going onward in the Von Vangelic's family tomb, we encountered found rather uh, the dwarf Andronius. Uh, and Andronius gave us a description, and we. We made a record of directions, and uh, we now know how to uh, to reach through the others that are, that are imprisoned in that dungeon. It's here. We took a long rest, and we re-entered the dungeon, and uh, therein Ragnar uh, gave a gave one of his sun rods the rogue. It led us to a an area where we were jumped by goblins and hobgoblins as uh, as we as we tracked along in the uh, directions that Adronius, Andronius had given us. Uh, we ended the action having defeated the goblins, hobgoblins gaining much experience and additional gold. Ready to go. All right, that sounds pretty good. So that's where you guys are kind of at. Um, you fought, uh, last, last thing you guys did, you, got, you guys fought some goblins and hobgoblins and, uh, in their little Camp Warren's area, and you end up taking them out, even though uh, one of the goblins jumped over a pit. I'm going to move you guys over. And yes, I did hear Christian say he went to go get his pizza. Put us on the new map, and we'll. You guys should be on. You may have to move your mouse or your cursor around to find where you're going. Oh yes, there's some. Some of that fine map. So here you guys are. Uh, from, looks like uh, I think uh, it's like Christian's still laying down. Remember, right? He was prone and crawling around trying to get up there. <laughs> At the end of last week's action, he was still still lying down on the job. Lying down on the job. Okay. I do would like to say that since that update, where you can make your little sheet. Do the pop out and be its mm -hmm. own separate page. That's yep. kind of cool. I That's like cool that. That's cool too. Yeah, I like being able to pop out the character sheet. That really is nice. I did forget, but that was another update they made to it. Well, that makes it easier to just scroll through that while you're looking for something and doing something else. Yes, yeah, while well, I'm in between actions, while well, I'm I'm planning my next turn on the. That character sheet open. Absolutely, that's a good idea. Daily powers, it's a big help. So, yep, the room you guys are at right now, you have, uh, there's two doors. Door to the west, door to the north, the door, north door is open. Um, and you actually see it's a hallway that goes down probably quite a ways into darkness, kind of. And uh, there is, a, what appears to be a pit about 10 feet past the door. There is a, a, a rope hanging from the ceiling that they've been probably using to help them climb over it if they want to go that way. Uh, it also they're, appears... They're swinging over it by any yeah. chance, are they? That's kind of what they're, they're using to try to swing over it, yes. Okay. And there's also, it looks like just past that goblin you guys killed, there appears to be what looks like a, another um, hallway going off to the uh, going off to your left. 
Um, can can Matthew will take a look down the hole and see if any dead, broken goblin bodies are in there? Sure, you gonna crawl over there? <laughs> no, I'm gonna stand up first. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Very good. You got. You guys should be able to control your characters and everything. So do what you need to. Uh, are there any bodies down there? No, you don't, you don't see any bodies. You can tell it goes down quite a ways, probably about twenty feet. The rope. You can you can you can look to see the rope probably doesn't go all the way down. The rope only goes. The rope only hangs from the ceiling about probably ten feet. Um, so it does not even go all the way down either, and it goes down into what appears to be darkness. Can we reach the rope from the edge of the pit? Uh, you can, actually, yes. Okay, so we could then, within reason, grab you could, that you rope. You could attempt to swing, swing across, across if you wanted pit. to. You could try to do that. And there's also a door off to the, the left in the room as well. It's going to require a check, or is this just... Something fairly automatic. There, there'd be a, there'd be a check involved with it. Well, well, the dwarves directions don't mention any swinging at all, so I think we can kind of rule out this direction. Well, I have I some I have some facility with. I'm not going to go that direction. Okay. What? Um, the dwarf wasn't exactly swung over a hole. So and and we we want to get through those prisoners really quickly. We can yeah, we can think... go down there later, but not, not right and now. I'm not a hundred percent sure that rope can hold my four hundred pound ass. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that, but that's a good point. Okay, very good. That's a very good point. I mean, little oh. goblins, yeah. I'm not sure hey, about Dad, a, you want to listen to the door and see if you can hear anything on the other side. Yeah, I want to do a perception check and see what's going on over there. Go for it. So you listen to the door and you do not hear anything. It sounds well, I rolled a very 1D6 quiet. For some reason. No, that was me. That's the, that's Shane. You rolled a 19. Oh, okay. So yeah, you you don't hear anything on the other side of the door. It's quiet as a grave. Door locked. It does not. Oh, like I said, does not appear right. to be locked. None of these doors here appear to have locks to them. Um, they appear to just be regular doors that are open. Just the door shut. Anyone object to Ragnar walking through the doorway? I will. I'm go and I want my. I'm just gonna say like, the last time those two goblins at the entrance opened a door, fire started spitting out everywhere. So we might might, might just want to be Good careful. Point. Yeah, like and we got that little traps. thing. Yeah, have prompt. Yeah, do a engineering check or. Actually, Sam can check for um, stuff. Mathis should probably open the door since he's fire resistant. So if anything does happen, it won't do anything to him. So the little bards make a little rhyme saying that we have a rogue and he can check the door for traps. Nice rhyme. Okay, I'll do that real quick. If that needs to happen. Yeah, I guess I'll do that real quick. Alright, give me a thievery check. Haven't had to use that yet in a second. That's like a plus eight, dude. So you look at this door, you search from top to bottom. It's a it's a double side it's a double door. And you look it up from down, you look at the there's no real handle, more like a it's like a push pull type door, but you do not see any sort of traps on there, any sort of mystic rune traps or anything like that. You, you don't see anything that would possibly have cause any problems if you open this door. 
you can definitely tell it's not locked. Um, so it, it does not appear to be trapped at all either. We're good. We have a little discussion of the rogue sunrod. He still have the sunrod. He does still have the sunrod. Well, we want our um, fire-resistant party member to, to, uh, to open the door and walk through. I'll stand right next to him. and uh... Actually, um, um, Rag um, Guy, if you're taking point, do you want the sunrod? No, I've got, I've got dark vision. Yeah, but figured if you'd be in front, we'd be able to see everything. Oh. Good idea. Why don't I take it to move through the doorway, and as the road comes through, I can hand off to him. Sure. Now I've got the uh, words. words. Well, yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Jane, you good with that? I'm, I'm going with it whenever you guys are ready. Okay. Go, oh, Mr. Fire Resistant. All right, Christian. You have, Christian, you have, you have any uh, math to open the door? Yep. Knew it. Uh. Is that fire? Thing? I'm just kidding. Okay, <laughs> I was wondering. I'm just kidding. You open the door, and there's no problems. You open the door, it slides open. Um, you could tell that it was probably fairly dark. And then as you turn the corner, you see uh, what appears to be a lighted area up ahead. Big room. And it's lighted, so I'm going to hand off the sun rod. Anyway. Um, can I sneak around the corner up there? Sure, give me a stealth check. And see if there's anything. All right, you feel uh, fairly stealthy. Go ahead and uh, and move, or however you want to move. You feel like you're being quiet. So you uh, you go into this room and it opens up, um, and it is brightly lit. There appears to be nothing in it, but in front of you, there is about a, um, about a forty foot, what appears to be a picture, and a portal. Well, it looks like a portal, and has a, there's a picture behind it. Uh, and a picture in the middle of this room shows a flickering image of a ca sinister castle in the middle of a swamp. That there's no people or critters or anything in the room? You don't see any people or monsters or critters. The room appears to be empty. Well, can we do? Can I do a perception check real quick, just in case? Because last time you said there wasn't anything, and there turned out to be stuff. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> you also notice there are two doors: one to the one to the left, and one to the right. You, I, I'm scared, guys. I'm you don't notice scared. anything, but what you do notice is that this picture appears to flicker every now and then. And it's, it's, it's a picture of looks like, like a castle in a swamp. Can I throw a shuriken at it? Go for it. I was going to say let, let, let Mathis like, do an arcana check on it. but So you throw a shuriken. Uh, it goes through and it goes right through it. Just That's what I feared. Sails right through. You hear it clang on the on the wall to the back, back behind it. Oh, it's a project. It's a projection. An illusion. So I'm it's guessing those well. little 
orb things are what's making that projection show. They're they're just no, those appear to be like torches that are lit. They're just lights, ever, ever burning torches oh. in a way. They're they're mounted to the wall. They 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 uh, make bright light. Okay, um, so that kind of blue wavy line at the top there that represents the that's the picture. Yep. Picture. Okay. Anyone want to do anything else? Uh, uh, Matthew was gonna wanna... stick his hand through it. Okay, you walk up to it. Go ahead and walk up to it. You put your hand, and it just kind of goes right through it. You, as you kind of like wave your hand, the picture distorts around your hand, but the larger picture doesn't change at all. Does hey. it? Is there any difference when he reaches in? Is it like a temperature change or anything like that? Uh, n nope. There's a, it's just like a it's like it's, you're sticking your hand through a hologram, pretty much. Okay, Ma okay. Matthew's gonna see his head through it. You put your head through it, and you see the the wall behind it. it I'm gonna stick my head out. I'm flying down. And insta kills me. I had to reroll. Cool. Um, I'm gonna turn. Matthew's gonna turn back to the rest of the party and say it appears just to be like a floating image. Nothing. Nothing more. I have a question for the group at large. Are we still following Adronius's directions? Oh yeah. Um, does someone have that open? I should probably get that actually. I want to check this thing out with some sort of a check or another because this is just weird. Go ahead, give me an Arcana check if you want. Okay, I'm looking in the sheets. I'm just seeing a whole bunch of stuff. Yes, um, what you need to do um, is you should be able to minimize what? each section. So at the top where it says character sheet items, you should be able to minimize that. There should be a line there. And you can minimize it to. Uh, okay, yeah. And you should be able to do that with all of them. The only one that you're really going to use most of the time is probably going to be characters and handouts. I think Dan had a stroke. Pretty picture. Pretty. So yeah, pretty you picture. think it's just a picture. Whoever did okay. this, whoever did this, is a, is a great artist. I'm going to tell the group. I think we should just go left. So, I'm gonna tell you again. I think we need to check Adronius's directions. All of a sudden, so, out so of the out picture. We're not off track. All of a sudden, this oh big slimy yellow thing. I think I yeah. recognize it. It's not a cube. It's it's not nothing like that. But it's is a, a slimy amorphous creature. Slime. Let's he continue. come he comes from the picture. So, with that, we will go ahead and roll some initiative. Second. Don't roll your initiative yet. Okay, you can roll it now. I'll be right, be right back one second. Ugh, John and I have traded luck for the night. I'm still just staring at the picture. I don't even see the big yellow thing yet. It's pretty. Picture's now changed to Pamela Anderson 20 years ago. <laughs> Poison Ivy. Or barbed wire, sorry, barbed wire. I think that yellow thing in front of us, the Poison Ivy, was just called a Creeping Charlie. All right, Vengren, you get to go first. Yay, there's something I want to try. What's that?
I will move to this off the wall and throw it at it. It is, it is, unfortunately, it is bolted to the wall. It's not like it's a removable fixture. Oh. Never mind, I'll throw it at it. Okay. That's a good idea, though. I like that. I like the idea, but and I, I thought about, I tried to do it before in one of my games a day, but unfortunately that is stuck to the wall. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> so you're throwing a shirk? What, what's, oh, what power are you using? Flourish. Fly Flourish. Fly Flourish sounds good. Your uh, your shirt can kind of you go you throw up towards him, and the ooze it's kind of at the top. It ooze kind of splits a, a little on the top, and it passes by and clangs in the back of the wall. Oops. All right, now it is uh, Mathis's turn. Much anyway. He's going to burn. He's going to. Uh... That'd be really cool if you could just like set off its daily like right in the middle of it. Burn. Scorching burst. Scorching burst. Where is it going to be centered on? Right in the middle. Okay, go ahead and uh, is do. Is it considered uh, a large creature? It is a large creature. It takes up. It's a four by four creature. I'll say you. I'll say you targeted that corner of it so it just hits him so give me uh give me one attack roll for him that'll be a hit at the same time since you're using a um a range attack on him he will take an opportunity attack on you since you are adjacent to him okay so go ahead you can go and roll damage because you did hit him So I think it's what a 1d6 plus 4 or something like that. Nine. Nine. He'll take nine damage, and you are going to take six damage with an ongoing five acid damage. Cool. Good thing it's not my character. So you take six damage, which actually he will he will actually fairly roll up low on that. But so you take six damage with a five acid damage. Anything else for you? You gonna move or anything like that? Shift backwards five feet. Okay. You did that. Go ahead and um, roll a saving throw for him. It's a d20. You were able to uh, get the uh, acid off of you. Kind of, like, when you move, you kind of shake your arm around where he hits you, and you uh, get most of the acid off of you. Woohoo! All it's right, good. you're up, Ragnar. <clears throat> what would you like to do, guy? Right now, I'm I'm very quickly checking something. No problem. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing to throw in here. Yeah, I already tried that. Um, I assume we're all carrying adventure kits. Is that correct? Yeah. There is there a flask of oil in the adventure kit? There is not. Flask of oil or extra. And see if you have it. Yeah, if you had if you already had a flask of oil, it'd be in your uh, it'd be in your um, equipment list. I believe I'm going to move to this point right here, and 
I will attack and mark the uh, the slime. Okay. Which attack would you like to use? A reaping strike. Go for it. That's definitely a hit. And? Wham, wham. Five points. All right, you uh, you bring your sword down and you uh, cut off a chunk of it that kind of careens off and, and splashes on the ground and kind of sizzles a little bit, but then uh, burns to, a little to the floor. All right, Mathel, you're up. Um, I'm sorry, I, repeat I the end of that again. It kind of sizzles into the floor. Just okay. a little chunk of it you cut off when you hit it. All right, okay. You did do some damage to it then. You did do some damage to it, yep. Excellent. Okay, I have a question though. Sure. If I do shared madness, mm -hmm. um, can I not have a second target? Or. Let me just look at Or does quick. it count as two targets? Um, it doesn't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to pick a second one. I'm gonna do shared madness then. Okay. Go for it. It's versus Will, I think, right? Yep. Nice. There you go. And I did mention that I had marked the slime. Yep, I got it on there. That's what the red dot is. Oh, okay, so, fine. So he takes 14 points of mis of uh, psychic damage. You uh, somehow assault this thing's mind. Not exactly sure where, but you do. <laughs> and it, uh, it takes some damage, and it... You... Doesn't shriek or nothing, but you you can imagine it shrieking on the inside. It quivered like a bowl full of jelly. Are you gonna move it all or anything? Uh, no. Um, I'm also going going to cast um a oath of immunity on it. Okay. So you use your oath on it. So this monster will surge forward and attack uh, an attack guy because the guy went up there and yelled, "Hey, attack me!" So a pseudopod slams out and hits you guy square in the chest. I mean, and uh. Right on. It, it hits you no matter what. And you're going to take 13 damage. He actually crit. So you take 13 damage. And you have an ongoing 5 acid damage. Now, I did not hear anybody say that we had had, a, had any kind of arrest on the previous room. I, I assumed you guys did. I think, I think you guys may have rested before we left or something. We had, we had okay. like a long rest. You get a short rest. You didn't take a long rest. Took a short rest. Okay. Sure. You, had, you, you did take a long rest in the middle of the game last time after you saved okay. Andronius, but um, you guys took a short rest after the goblins. So, all right, you take 13 damage, guy, and uh, you have a five ongoing acid damage on you. Okay. Ouch. Clocky, a good one. All right. The uh, bard is up. 
Is he going to assault its mind too? He, he watched this thing uh, just slam right into uh, the fighter there, and he kind of takes a step backwards, and he'll uh, point his wand at him and uh, assault his mind with a, a bad joke. <laughs> and he misses. Unfortunately, this thing doesn't understand good humor. <laughs> doesn't have any humor at all. All right, you're up, Minger. Alrighty. Uh, from can I do like a nature check on this thing and see? Absolutely. Well, let me see. Um, I'll tell you what. Can I check it here in a second? Let me look. I love it when you ask this type of stuff because then I get to, I get to bring up the actual book. Because it's looking like regular weapons ain't. I mean, some of them is kind of, but I don't, I don't trust these slimy. It would be, it would be a nature check. It'd be a nature, nature right. check. I'd say we're going to learn everything there is to know about it. Bert, near. So this thing kind of like just kind of punched your mom in the face, right, Dad? 